Welcome back to the lessons. We are now ready to move on to the Amplitude Envelope Generator. Some may refer to this as the ADSR. In the lessons, I may refer to it as the EG for short. Envelope generators are used to change a parameter from the moment the key is held until it is released. For our first envelope generator, we will change the amplitude. We can either make a short plucked sound like a guitar or a very long drawn out sound like a violin. Envelope generators typically have four stages. Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. Attack is from the moment we strike the key until it reaches the peak amplitude. Decay begins the moment the attack stage is completed and begins to decrease the amplitude until it reaches Sustain, which is the amplitude we will stay at until the key is released. Now let's take a look into BP ADSR EG. And we're going to take a look at 4 include ADSR.h. And make sure that we're in the ADSR EG project, not ADSR EG2. We'll get to this here in a bit, but we're going to start with this one right here at ADSR.h. Scroll down to here and you see a list of enumerators. Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release, Done. These enumerators are automatically given a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we add more in there, they will continue to increase the value for each additional enumerator we add to the list. We will use these names in a switch state function later on. Now let's look at our envelope generator struct. Type def struct ADSRT. And inside contains all the parameters attack rate, decay rate, sustain level, release rate, value, and state. Just like when we had the oscillator type def struct, we now have a struct for the envelope generator. Next we have what are called exported functions. This is a list of the many functions in ADSR.C that we want other files in our code to have access to. If we did not have them listed here, our compiler would have errors every time we tried to call these functions in a different file. We will have exported functions in most of the .h header files in our project code. Now let's head over to source ADSR.C. We see we created a ADSR struct variable amp eg. This will be our amplitude envelope generator struct. Later when we get into other envelope generators they will have their own variable name just like we did with the oscillators. Below that we have a couple of variables we will discuss using near the end of this lesson. Attack val and release val. Further down are quite a number of functions. ADSR init. This will be called when we first start up the BP synth to initialize a envelope generator at startup. It's called by the function synth init and wavegen.c right here. The ADSR key on and key off functions will be used when we press or release a key. We will get back to this in a bit when we go over the node on, node off process. Further down we have many functions that are called when we are making changes to the ADSR parameters via control changes. We will cover these soon. And finally we are at ADSR compute sample, which is where we actually process a value for use for the amplitude of our sample. We don't process the sample in here. We simply are creating a volume setting that will change automatically while we hold the key down. Let's take a quick peek in wavegen.c 
to see where ADSR Compute Sample is called from. Scroll down to Make Sound and you will find ENV equals ADSR Compute Sample AMP EG. This line of code calls ADSR Compute Sample and assigns the result to ENV. Notice that this line of code is outside the for loop. We don't need to call it 500 times like the oscillators require in the for loop. One time prior to each batch of samples generated in the for loop is all that is required. Once we have assigned a value to ENV, we can then use it inside the for loop right after Y wave compute. Right here at Y equals Y times volume times ENV. ENV is used in conjunction with the VOL variable to adjust the final volume. If ENV is a decimal value less than 1, it will reduce the volume. If it is equal to 1, then it will be at a maximum value which is set by the VOL variable. The envelope generator will change the value of ENV automatically depending on the direction of the keystrokes and the parameter settings. Now let's go take a look in source main.c. Locate user code begin pv, which is right here. And look further down to these two statements, extern oscillator t op1 and extern adsrt amp eg. These externs allow main.c to read and write to the structs op1 and amp eg in the other files. Let's head on down to MIDI note on, which is right here. Depending on our if statement, we will either save the note number to voice zero and call the ADSR key on function, or first scan for a place to save the new note number in the voice array, followed by calling the ADSR key on function. Notice that if we have a note playing already, we don't need to call the ADSR key off function. We simply just retrigger the envelope generator back into the attack mode. This simple version of code does not have a full attack reset envelope generator value to zero function, so it will be playing like it is in legato mode. Later on, we will make a function to let us turn legato mode on or off so that when it is off, it will completely start the attack mode again from zero no matter if you have other keys held or not. There's another call for the ADSR key on function in the MIDI note off function right here. And this is where we are holding more than one note down and releasing one of the notes re-triggers a previous note back on. We don't actually use ADSR key off unless we are trying to silence the last note we're holding down. Now let's head back to source ADSR.C and let's take a closer look at ADSR key on. When ADSR key on is called, it is changing values in the struct that the ENV pointer is pointing at, in this case the AMP EG ADSR struct. By changing ENV state to attack, the envelope generator will begin in attack mode the next time ADSR compute sample is called. Now let's take a look at ADSR compute sample. We can see the function has a few switch cases. Attack, decay, and release. These are the enumerators which can be found defined in ADSR.h, along with a couple more enumerators, sustain and done. The first case is attack. If the amp eg struct member state equals attack, the case will match and its code will be ran. The attack case will increase the envelope value by the value of attack rate each time ADSR compute sample is ran and state equals attack. The lower the value of attack rate, 
the slower the volume will increase as time progresses. The greater the value of attack rate, the faster the volume will increase. The if statement checks to see if value has reached or exceeded the target value of 1. Value is set to 1 to ensure that it is a value that is not greater than 1 and state is changed to decay. The last line of code in the attack case is break. This will be ran at the end of the case every time to avoid checking the other two cases and will jump directly to return env value. So when we return to env equals ADSR sample compute in make sound, we will assign value to env. If we had met our if statement in the attack case, we would have changed the mentioned parameters and the next time ADSR sample compute is called, our state would be decay. The decay case is ran in similar fashion as the attack case was, except this time we check to see if value has reached or exceeded the value of sustain level, which is our next target value. And instead of increasing the volume, now we are decreasing it by subtracting the value of decay rate from value. The higher the value of decay rate, the faster the volume will reach the sustain level. If we reach or exceed the value of sustain level, we will assign sustain level to value and change state to sustain. Again, our last line of code in the case is break, which will skip the last switch case and take us directly to return value which will assign value to env in make sound. Since there isn't any case for sustain, value will continue to hold the last value assigned to it, which is sustain level. Every time ADSR compute sample is ran while the envelope generator is in sustain mode, it will simply keep returning the sustain level value and the note will continue to play at sustain level as long as the key is not released. When we release our last key, we will call ADSR key off, and we will assign release to state. So the next time we go down and call ADSR sample compute, the case will equal release. The release switch code is much like the decay code, but this time we are subtracting release rate from value until it reaches zero, which is the final target value. We then set value to zero and state to done. Since there isn't any switch case for done, the envelope generator will cease to do any operations. Additionally, since value will equal zero, the note will cease to be heard. When we return to make sound, we will assign value to envelope. The ADSR project code we just went over was actually simplified to make things easier to initially explain. As with many of our audio settings, we benefit greatly when we use exponential changes. The code we just went over is all linear. Each increment or decrement operation is simply adding or subtracting a simple static value. But if we make the changes curved like this, it will make the flow of amplitude change in a way that sounds more like a musical instrument and give us better control of the envelope generator as a whole. Very much like the volume control we covered in an earlier lesson. Now let's open up a revised version of the envelope generator code. BP ADSR EG2 4 Source ADSR.C. Scroll down to the ADSR compute sample function and you will notice that previously for attack we use value equals value plus attack rate. Our new method will be value equals value plus attack rate times 1 divided by 0.75 minus value. 
This method will give our attack rate a nice curve. To see how it works, let's make attack rate equal 0 0.00002 and value equal 0 0.1. This will simulate near the very beginning of the attack cycle. Instead of going over each formula step by step, I will only be showing the steps performed with a final value to speed things along. Please feel free to evaluate the formulas yourself to see how they work. Our first value equates like this with an attack rate equals 0 .00002 and value equals 0 0.1. We end up with a final value of 0 0.1000 We will use the final value from the previous calculation in the next one. So next time we compute a sample, it will look like this, using the new value of 0 0.1000-2466. And we end up with a final value of 0 0.1000-4931-9507. Let's do the calculation one more time we'll end up with a final value of 0 0.1000739185211 as you can see we incremented from 0.1 to around 0 0.10002 0 0.10004 and 0 0.10007 with remaining numbers but you get the idea if we were to use the old method of value equals value plus rate, with the same rate value of 0 .00002 for each increment, we would see it increment like this. 0 0.1, 0 0.10002, 0 0.10004, and 0 0.10006. You can see by the time we reach the third value, we are incrementing faster with the exponential incrementing algorithm than what the simple linear addition provides us. The exponential incrementing applied in this equation will be faster for about the first half, then begin to sharply get slower as we increase further along. This is commonly known as a logarithmic curve, also known as a inverted exponential curve. I will often refer to either form of the curves as exponential in the lessons, regardless if it is inverted or not. Let's see how it looks when value is closer to a value of 1. Let's make value equal 0 0.8. This will simulate the envelope generator reaching near the end of its attack cycle. Our first value equates like this, with a final value of 0 0.80001066. When we do it again, we end up with a final value of 0 0.80002131987. And doing it one more time, we end up with a final value of 0 0.80003195987. This time we incremented from 0 0.8 to 0 0.80001, 0 0.80002, and 0 0.80003. If we did it linearly with an incremental rate of 0 0.00002, it would be 0 0.8, 0 0.80002, 0 0.80004 and 0 0.80006 which would be faster twice as fast actually now we can see we are incrementing each step slower when value is closer to 1 than it did when it was closer to 0 by using the same exponential rate formula we will also make changes to decay and release as well in our BP ADSR EG2 project. Decay will be changed to value equals value plus decay rate times 1 minus 
1 divided by 0 0.75 minus value. And release will change to value equals value plus release rate times 1 minus 1 divided by 0 0.63 minus value. You will see some variations in them, but the intention of each algorithm is the same. To make the envelope generator transition quickly at first, then slow down more and more in the second half until it reaches the target value. You will notice in attack and decay, we have 1 divided by 0 0.75. The 0.75 can be changed to be lower or higher to influence the shape of our curve. I would stay in a range of 0.35 to 1. 0.75 seems to have the best feel to me, so that's why it's that value now. In release, you can see I changed it to be 0 0.63. Again, it's a matter of how it felt to me after tweaking it around a bit and hearing the effect. You can change these values to get an idea of what you'd like. You could even make a new control change parameter to change these on the fly so you have an adjustable exponential rate. A trick we will look into in a later lesson for other parameters. You may also notice decay and release are a little different than attack because they have a 1 minus before the 1 divided by 0 0.75. I won't be running any more example calculations for decay or release. But if you're curious how they work, you can plug some values into the equations like we did before and see for yourself how they turn out. You will see it runs in reverse. Instead of adding to the value, it will subtract to the value by adding a negative value to value. Instead of a humped looking exponential curve, the curve will be cupped. Values will change quickly at first, then slow down near the bottom. Now let's take a look at how we change the values for our attack, decay, release, and sustain in the first version of the Envelope Generator project, BP ADSR EG. And let's take a look inside of Core Source MIDI CCs to see the control changes that we have, which is 41, 42, 43, and 44, to control the Envelope Generator's attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. In source ADSR.C, we will see where those functions are called right here. ATT for attack time, DEC time for decay times, sustain level, release time. Let's take a closer look at attack time. This function is going to call another function. ADSR set attack time and it's going to pass on the address of amp EG which is our ADSR struct. It's going to pass on the value of our control change data value and it's going to divide that by 127 and add 0 0.001. The 0 0.001 is there so we have some value even if val here equals 0. We don't want it lower than 0 .0001. It will produce pops and clicks in the audio if we do so. Not all of this code will be used in the BP ADSR EG2 code, but I wanted to again show how linear values do not work very well. If you tried both versions of the envelope generator projects, you probably noticed the controls were very touchy and unbalanced in the first version compared to the second version. In the first version, the first half of the attack or release controls are difficult to get nice results. You only have a small amount of control for short attacks or releases. And the rest of the controls movement makes the sound play way too long. Additionally, the attack and decay controls did not match in timing at all. If attack and decay were both at 9 o'clock positions, Attack would take much longer to complete before decay began. And decay completed in a much shorter amount of time before it reached a sustained value of zero. The second version is much more balanced. The same settings have nearly equal amounts of completion times. 
Having the controls balanced makes changing the settings much more intuitive. I fixed this imbalance problem by using a math function called fscale. We can find fscale in source math tools. And here it is, fscale. The function is quite long and I won't be covering it here line by line, but most of it is self-explained when you look at it. The key points to see here is the format. fscale Float Original Minimum, Float Original Max, Float New Begin, Float New End, Float Input Value, and Float Curve. This function allows us to remap a range of values to a new range of values and get an exponential curve influenced into the new range. The arguments are self-explanatory. We have our original minimum and maximum values, the new begin and end values we want the original values mapped to, our input value, and the type of exponential curve we want indicated by values of negative 10 to positive 10. The curve will either be negative or positive. So a negative 10 would be a maximum negative curve and a 10 would be a maximum positive curve. Negative meaning it slowly curves upward at first and sharply rises later on. Graphically, it has a cupped appearance and again is commonly called an exponential curve. A positive curve rises quickly, then levels off near the top. Graphically, it has a humped appearance and again, it is commonly called a logarithmic curve. This math function will be very helpful and used many times over in the code from here on out. I would suggest at least looking it over in how the basic math works, but honestly, you could easily just use the function alone by inserting your variables and values you desire to meet your requirements without ever really going into all the math it contains. Now let's head over to the improved control code in bpadsreg 2 or ADSR.C. Scroll down until you find ATT time set or attack time set. You will notice we've made some changes. We're calling our scale math function here and assigning it to attack value. And then we're using attack value in our function call ADSR set attack time. What happens in here is we're remapping values 0 through 127 to 0 through 0 0.5 with a negative curve of 3, a mild curve. Then we call the ADSR set attack time function. We pass on the address of the AMPG ADSR struct and we pass on the value of attack val plus 0 .0001. You will notice decay time set and sustain level set have not been altered. I found they still worked well without the mouth function. There's no point in bogging down the microcontroller with the extra math if it's not necessary. Release time set is almost identical to the attack function, but the negative curve value is negative 5 instead of negative 3. Again, it's set to what seemed to sound good to me after a lot of experimenting. Now let's take a look at the functions those functions call. ADSR set attack time, set to decay time, set sustain level, and set release time. Most are very similar and simple to follow. They are saving parameter values into the ADSR T struct that ENV points to. But you will notice set sustain level has a few extra lines of code. The extra code allows you to change the sustain value while the sound is playing. So if you have not yet reached the sustain state yet, changing level can either lengthen or shorten the time it takes for decay to finish its cycle. But if the current state of the envelope generator is sustain, then you can adjust the sustain knob and it will either increase or decrease the volume. This will be much more handy when we get into the filter control lessons later on. The values for attack, decay, and release that we are storing into the 
AMP EG ADSR T struct are treated as timing values and will be used to control the rate at which each state moves from one value to the destination target value. Thus, the parameter names attack rate, decay rate, and release rate. Taking a closer look at attack rate equals 25 divided by time times sample rate, we will see we have a macro in here, sample rate, which is set to 32,000. If you recall, we used this macro when we created a sample in an oscillator function. Having the macro makes it very simple to change the sample rate and it will update throughout our code where we need it automatically if we choose to do so. The value for attack rate is going to be very small since we want to increase the amplitude very slowly for each sample. So if our time is equal to something like 4, we would end up with attack rate equals 25 divided by 0 0.25 times 32,000, which evals to attack rate equals 25 divided by 8,000, and we get a final value of 0 0.003125, which is a fairly small value. But when you are incrementing 64 times per second, you definitely want to increment with tiny steps. Otherwise, it will become the target value too quickly. 64 times a second is based upon 32,000 samples done in groups of 500. So 32,000 divided by 500 equals 64. Since we only update the envelope generator once every 500 samples, this is why it is only updated 64 times per second. The envelope generator is a feature that will definitely have the most impact in animating the sound and giving it character. We will be creating two more envelope generators later on. One to animate the filter control and another to animate pitch control. The envelope generator is a very math hungry process and there are limitations when using multiple envelope generators at the same time. But for the most part you won't run into this problem unless you are really straining the BP's microcontroller out. So please be sure you fully understand how the ADSR functions work. It's not only crucial to understand how the BP synth works, but also important so you can make changes to it later on if you wish. Next we will create some new oscillator waveforms and a way to select them.